The topic of my deliberation is identification of instruments. Like any other sciences, the acquisition of knowledge in the subject anthropology too involves not just the theoretical aspects alone, but it involves equally in the actual field using certain standardized techniques with the help of the different types of apparatus, instruments, etc., which is commonly known as practical. The methodology also varies depending on the nature of the practicals. Physical anthropology, one of the branches of anthropology, focuses its main attention on the study of human evolution and human variation. For understanding human evolution and establishment of human variation, certain biological traits are studied in different ways. For example, certain traits are observed, some are measured, others are chemically tested, and so on, following certain well-defined procedures. Anthropometry, as defined by Joan Comas, is a systematic technique for measuring and taking observation on men. His skeleton, the skull, the limbs, trunk, etc., as well as the organs, by the most reliable means and scientific methods. It deals with the techniques for measuring different parts of the human skeleton. In short, it is the art of system of measuring the human body and its parts. Anthropometry can be subdivided into osteometry, that is measurement of skeleton, somatometry, that is measurement of the living body or the cadaver. Anthropometry, which basically deals with systematic techniques of taking measurements, both on the living and the skeleton, requires the help of certain instruments. The measurements are of different kinds, like linear, gird, skin fold, weight, dimensional measurements, etc. Most of the measurements are taken from one landmark to another. So it is very necessary to know the exact landmark of each measurement. There are different procedures for taking various anthropometric measurements. While taking paired measurements on the living, generally the left side is recommended as it is less likely to be affected by various factors for example, occupational deformity and change due to extra work. Further, all measurements have to be recorded following certain standardized techniques such as making the subject sit straight or stand erect against a wall, allowing the head to rest on the eye ear or the Frankfurt horizontal plane. In order to take the various measurements, Different instruments such as sliding caliper, spreading caliper, anthropometer and rod compass, weighing machine, measuring tape, harpendon caliper etc. are employed. Diversity As it has been a handmade to various branches of studies, a great diversity of measurement is seen. By anthropological system of anthropometry, those measuring measurements are meant, which are seen to be of greater general interest. As a matter of fact, in the system of diversity, anthropometry reigned supreme until recent times as it is unconceivable how much valuable words must have been lost due to lack of an agreed system of comparison of values obtained. The diversity depends on different factors such as application of instruments, method, purpose, etc. However, the system has no limit and is most likely 
that it is subject to change in accordance with advancement in knowledge. Utility The important purpose of anthropometric measurements is to throw light on the problems of racial biology and racial composition. There are other purposes such as industrial purpose, regulation of art, military selection, selection of sports person, medical, surgical and dental purposes, detection of bodily defects and their correction, criminal and other identifications, eugenic purpose, scientific purpose, etc. Values The values of anthropometric measurements in anthropology are of three kinds. Reconstructional, evolutionary, and for racial classification and identification of races. Accuracy Although absolute precision should be the goal in taking anthropometric measurements, yet that is not always attainable as various kinds of error very often creep in. Errors can be of the following types. Instrumental error, personal error, parallax error, observational error. Personal errors may be allowed to a certain extent. However, earnest attempt must be made to eliminate these factors to get the measurement as correct as possible. Spreading caliper of Martin. This instrument consists of two long arms, the upper half of which are curved outwards and bounded at one end. The tip of the curved arms are provided with either small knob-like structures or with pointed ends. A scale is fixed at the middle of the left curved arms, keeping the other end free. The scale passes through the socket fixed on the other arm. A screw at the back side of the metal piece controls the movement of the two arms and graduated scale of the instrument. The scale is graduated proportionately to the distance between the two free ends of the curved arms. Spreading caliper are made in two sizes, one of 25 cm for taking smaller measurements and another of 60 cm for taking measurements on pelvis, which is otherwise known as pelvimeter. This spreading caliper, the curved ends, which have knob-like structure, is known as spreading caliper with blunt ends, while the one with pointed ends is known as the spreading caliper of Martin with pointed ends. This instrument is used for taking certain measurements that involve curved areas. Manipulation While taking measurements, the two arms of the instrument should be held in such a manner that the curved arms remain between the middle finger below and the thumb above while the index finger touch the knob of the arms. With the index finger pad supporting the tips of the caliper, it is brought to touch the landmark from where the readings are to be recorded. Precaution Undue pressure should not be applied while taking the measurements. Utility The instrument with blunt ends is used for taking measurement on the living while the instrument having sharp pointed end is used on the non-living. Measurements such as maximum head length, maximum head breadth, least frontal breadth, 
by auricular bread, by mestodel bread, bread of by zygomatic arch, maximum intermalar bread, by gonel bread, etc. are measured with the help of the spreading caliper with blunt ends on the living. Sliding caliper. It consists of a 25 cm long straight steel bar graduated on both the sides and two cross bars. One of the cross bars is fixed at one end of the scale while the other parallel to the first one can be slided over the scale with the help of a socket provided with a screw to be used to fix this socket at any place. Each of the crossbar has two ends of which one is blunt and the other sharp and pointed. The blunt end is used for taking measurement on the living while the sharp end is used on the skeletons that is the skull and bones. The scale is graduated starting from the fixed end and continued downwards up to 200 mm. Again from the base of the set bar starting from zero point it goes up to the length of 50 mm upward. The scale at the lower region of the bar is used for taking certain depth measurement. In such a case, a change is to be made in arranging the instrument. The movable casket should be fitted on the main scale in a reverse order, that is upside down position. Manipulation at the time of taking measurement by this instrument, the steel bar is held by the right hand between the palm and the four fingers of the right. After locating the landmark, the tip of the fixed upper cross bar of the caliper is held by the left hand and it is gently placed on the landmark. Then the movable crossbar is guided by the thumb and slided in upward or downward position so as to touch the landmark. The measurement is then recorded. Precaution To avoid hurting the subject while taking the measurement on the living, the tip of the fixed crossbar is held steadily using the left index finger or it can be held firmly between the thumb and the index finger. Utility It is used for taking shorter breaths such as nasal height, nasal breath, nasal depth, external biocular breath, inner ocular breath, mouth breath, ear length, ear breath, etc. Anthropometer. It is the most used instrument for many of the anthropometric measurements on the living. It consists of four segments which when joined together form a rigid road of 200 cm that is 2 meters in length. On one side of the road there is a graduated scale in an ascending order from the bottom to the top provided with a fixed socket through which an adjustable crossbar can be fitted. There is another socket with a window having provision for an adjustable crossbar and the socket can be slided up and down on the road. One end of each of the crossbar is pointed with which the required landmark can be touched. Manipulation For taking the height measurements, for instance, teacher, 
that is the vertical distance between the vertex and the floor. The subject is made to stand in an erect position with the feet running parallel to one another, the heels touching one another, the hands hanging by the sides and the head resting on the eye ear or the Frankfurt horizontal plane. With the investigator standing at the right side of the subject, the anthropometer is held vertically in the mid-sagittal plane of the subject. The landmark is to be located by raising in horizontal position. The crossbar fitted to the movable casket is lowered to touch the vertex gently. The readings are recorded upper side of the window of the casket. In case of span or arm stretch measurement, that is the straight distance from one dactylion to the other in the fully stretched condition of the arms, the subject is made to stretch both the arms laterally and parallel to the floor. The anthropometer is held horizontally against the subject's stretch arms on the back side in such a manner so that the tip of the right middle finger touches the zero point. The subject is then asked to push the movable socket with the tip of the left middle finger as far as possible. In this condition, the readings is recorded from the inner border of the movable socket. Precaution when taking height measurements such as vertex or stature, height tragus, height acromion, etc., the subject should be made to remove his or her shoes before standing against the wall. In case of female subjects, while taking height vertex, the hair at the back of the head should be let down. Heels and buttocks should touch the wall and the head held in eye ear plane. Note that the anthropometer is in vertical position, the crossbar fitted to the movable socket, which otherwise should touch the vertex gently. Utility The main purpose of the anthropometer is to take height measurements as well as transverse breadth of the body. Road Compass The road compass is not a separate instrument but a part of the anthropometer. It is the upper segment of the anthropometer along with a movable socket and the two crossbars which is known as the road compass. It has a descending scale, the zero point of which begins at the lower end of the fixed socket. Manipulation For measuring certain horizontal length like biacromial or shoulder breadth, that is the straight distance between the two acromion points, the investigator stands behind the subject holding the rod compass. The two acromion points are located by palpating with the help of the first finger. The main rod of the instrument is then held between the palm and forefingers, holding the fixed socket by the left hand, while the right thumb is used for moving the socket up and down. The two ends of the crossbars, having adjusted to the same length, are placed against the landmarks. The measurement is knotted down at the inner end of the movable socket. Precaution Undue pressure should not be exerted on any of the landmarks while taking the reading on the living. Except for a few specific measurements such as bicrystal bread, spinal bread, hip bread, where a slight pressure is required to get the accurate reading. Utility 
the rod compass is used for taking longer breadth measurements which cannot be covered by the sliding caliper by adjusting the crossbar as per the requirement. Conclusion The principal focus of physical anthropology is to know man in depth with regard to his evolutionary trends as well as human variations that has come about in due course of millions of years. This could be achieved through the application of anthropometric measurements. For this, certain standardized instruments have been designed and are being employed for taking measurements of various natures on different parts of the body, both of the living and the dead, that is the skeletal remains. These measurements are then meaningfully interpreted.